welcome to week eight of the class. Now, I know we want to get we want to get through this week as quick as possible because we got spring break coming up next week, but uh, we still have some business we need to take care of in regards to these evaluation essays this week. So what I wanted to do was go over with you today uh, some uh, tips on how to handle workshopping. Okay, so. Let's talk about our current schedule here. At the pace we are currently at, here is the schedule for the evaluation argument. So this week, you guys are doing revision workshopping on this essay. Okay, You should have a draft posted to your team's discussion board and be giving feedback to your teammates' essays. Okay, We are in a workshop week this week. Okay, So make sure that you guys are holding up your end of the workshop contract. Next week is spring break, okay? Uh, so there's not going to be really probably any work being done uh, for anybody's classes. Uh, I know for sure I'm not going to be doing any work during that week. I'm actually traveling that week, so uh, we're probably not going to be doing much of anything in relation to this essay next week, okay? <clears throat> following week, though. Following week is the proofreading and editing workshop. So you'll need to post a revised draft to the discussion board that is 90% complete for the next week's workshop and give proofreading feedback to your teammates' essays, okay? So you need to have your draft mostly complete by this point, okay? The proofreading and editing workshop is entirely for polish. Now, uh, Thursday the 25th, which is during that proofreading and editing week, the link opens to turn in the evaluation under the assignments tab. It's just like the last time. It opens up on the Thursday the week it's due. Now, this last time, I know we had some uh, uh, problems involving weather uh, and involving accessibility. Some people weren't able to get to it, so I did extend it a week, okay? But this this one, we got to try to stick with our deadline, okay? Thursday, 25th, the link opens to turn in evaluation under the assignments tab. You'll need to turn in all of your drafts along with the final draft, okay? Uh, just like you did with the uh, classical argument. Uh, in the order of final draft, then the criteria you used, and then the uh, proofreading draft, and then the revision draft at the bottom, okay? Now, one thing I want to note here is that there's been a significant lack of participation in the workshop sessions on the classical assignment. I've actually had a number of people email me uh, and inform me that their teams have done virtually nothing, okay? Uh, at least uh, good, a good amount of the teams seem to have ghosted each other, okay, uh, in terms of doing workshopping, and that's kind of unacceptable here because we need to uh, be working with this. We need to be working together with everybody, okay? Even though we're in a virtual setting, you still got to stay in contact, okay? To be helpful now, we're going to go through how a proper workshop session works this week. Okay, So we're just going to talk over what you should be doing in these workshop sessions uh, just so that you have an idea of what you should be expecting and what is expected of you. Okay. Now, if you took my 1301, you probably you would already know this, so this is just a refresher for you. But if you're new to my classes, this is the way we. This is the way I handle things: is workshopping. So why workshop? Yagelsky makes mention in the early chapters of the textbook that one of his ten core concepts is that writing is a social activity. Okay, that means two things. One is that you write for an audience toward a particular consumer. You need to know who you're writing for. You need to have a particular audience in mind for your writing. The other thing is that you write for yourself to express your opinions, arguments, or other feelings. Okay, so you have to uh, balance those as well. Okay, the audience has to be a wider audience than just yourself, but at the same time, you need to write for yourself because you need to have a vested interest in what it is you're writing. Now, a necessary step in the writing process is getting feedback from readers to know what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong. Okay, that's the whole point of the workshop session. You need to be getting feedback. Workshops are about improvement, not so much criticism. Okay, they do get critical at times. 
And you need to accept that people are going to see things in your writing that they may not like, okay? That they may feel is wrong. It is not just to be critical of you just to be mean. They are trying, the point of this is to try to help you improve, okay? To be successful, writers need multiple viewpoints to offer feedback on their work. So they need to know, the writers need to know that they're reaching the right audience and that the audience is going to understand what they have to say. So let's talk about uh, presenting drafts and offering feedback. Okay. Now, in order to fully compose a polished, well-reasoned essay, it is necessary to get feedback from your peers. That's a must. Okay. Uh, there's no getting around it. Professionals workshop, amateur writers workshop, student writers workshop. Everybody has to workshop. Okay. When the writer presents their work to you, here's the approach you want to take. First off, read it over once, just to get an idea of the main topics and arguments being covered. Okay, so uh, if you can uh, look at it, look it over just real quick. Okay, uh, see if you can get the gist of what they're saying. Make sure that it's making sense. Okay, read it again slower and more carefully, and consider elements in the writing that you like. Is there a particular turn of phrase that uh, appeals to you? Is there a particular use of their imagery? A particular use of their evidence? A particular way that they're phrasing an argument? Okay, that you like. Okay, it's something that you can tell them is good. Then you read it a third time and consider elements in the writing that may be awkward or cause other readers issues. Is there anything that a reader may have trouble with? Something that's going to affect how comfortable it is for that reader to read it? Or something that's going to uh, create consternation from the audience because maybe they don't understand something clearly or maybe something's not uh, as clearly explained as it should be. When you give your feedback to the writer, start with what they are doing right, what you feel works. Move from there into elements that may need revision. Okay? This is the approach that you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Okay? You are going to want to try to let the writer know what they're doing right first, because then they'll be more willing to listen to you when you give them the critical stuff. Okay? Butter them up a little bit, and that's all right. Okay? Butter them up a little bit, let them know what they're doing right, let them know what you like. Then you get into, okay, this is what needs fixing, okay? So here's some things that you need to consider when you're doing revisions. Uh, in context with the current essay, the evaluation, this is what you need to be looking for in your revision workshops, okay? First, is the criteria unclear? The writing does not give any idea of how the subject is being judged or for what reason those criteria exist. Okay, so has the writer actually made a statement of what their criteria is or are they just basically just getting their thoughts out there without any kind of context? Okay, so you need to have some kind of context. You need to have some kind of criteria that you're working with in order to properly handle this assignment. So, if their criteria is unclear in the writing, you need to let them know about it. Second, details are not present. The writer does not have a clear idea of what sort of subject the writer is dealing with because there is not the specific detail included. Okay? That should say the reader does not have a clear idea. Okay? Uh, if you're not providing enough detail that we can understand what you're talking about or that we can understand uh, why it is that you are mentioning this subject, uh, the elements that you're talking about that you're trying to uh, critique with, if there's not enough detail as to uh, to explain why those uh, details are there, if there's not enough detail to show why those criteria are there, why that uh, subject is what you want to work with, that's going to hurt your essay in the long run, and you're going to need to try to put in more of that detail. Okay. <clears throat> uh, organization. Is the essay arranged... If the essay is arranged in a haphazard way or in any order of arguments that either confuses the audience or make little sense, okay, is the organization going to be something that the reader can logically follow? Is it something that's following a certain pathway? For some things, it's easier than others. Like, for instance, if you were reviewing, if you're doing an evaluation of something that's story-based, 
uh, if you're going chronologically through the story, like some of those reviewers did last, uh, when we looked at it two weeks ago, uh, then it's going to be a little bit more easy to come up with a logical organization. You just follow the storyline. Okay. Other things, maybe not so much. Maybe you need to do them in the order that a typical person experiences them. This would be things like if you were doing an evaluation of a hotel chain or a museum or a theme park or something like that. Okay, You may want to have a logical regression as to how the typical consumer experiences it. Okay, How do they go around the park? How do they go? What process do they have to go through to check in and stay at that hotel? So on and so forth. Okay. Uh, the fourth thing to look for is readability issues. Okay, are there enough paragraph breaks? Is the language being used understandable, or is there a lot of specific terminology that will lose the average reader? Does the tone feel like something a reader will want to engage with? Okay, let's talk about each of those individually. First off, paragraph breaks. I cannot emphasize enough that we need to have paragraph breaks in essays of this length. Okay, you cannot, I repeat, cannot write one of my essays as a single paragraph that is three to five pages long because that will absolutely be a slog for the reader. Uh, what we want to try to focus on is making the reader comfortable and getting the reader to understand what you have to say. Okay, so do, do use paragraph breaks, one concept per paragraph. Start with the concept and then go into the details that describe that concept. Okay. In this case, it'll be your, for the evaluation, it'll be your, how your subject meets the criteria. Uh, start with the criteria and then talk about what applies to that criteria within your subject. Okay. Is the language being used understandable? A lot of specific terminology that will lose the average reader. Is there anything that you need to define for the reader? that you have it, okay? That's gonna also add to reader comfort. You want the reader to be able to be on the same page with you and understand the same terminology that you are using, okay? Third, the tone. Uh, does it feel like something the reader will want to engage with? Are you being as neutral as you can be, okay? Do you have a positive tone to it or are you doing negative, okay? Are, there are certain things that you can use sparingly, especially if you're doing a review of something that you think is bad, okay? But you don't want to overdo it. Like, you can be a little snarky, but you don't want to have three pages worth of, I'm going to do my best impression of John Oliver on crack, okay? We do not want to have an entirely snarky uh, or entirely sarcastic or entirely... Uh, negative, degrading, that sort of thing, okay? You want to try to balance it out, okay? Make your tone sound like what you're trying to accomplish, okay? If you're trying to say that something is good, make sure you stay positive, okay? Stay positive with it. If you're trying to say that something maybe isn't as good, still you want to try to stay positive. You don't have to just go degrading on it. Okay, I would actually recommend trying to be a little bit more sympathetic if you have a subject that does not meet your criteria. Okay, if it's not meeting your criteria, talk about why and maybe offer some kind of maybe solution, maybe correction that can be done so that your subject can meet that criteria. All right, once you get your feedback back, though, then you want to try to integrate it, okay? As a writer, once you receive your feedback from your peers, it's up to you to decide how much of it to integrate into your next draft, okay? So you don't have to, do, to take everybody's advice, but you want to uh, try to integrate as much as you can the stuff that you agree with, okay? Compare feedback to each other so you know what areas are consistently mentioned by your workshopping peers. If there's something that everything mentions, that's going to be something you have to fix. Okay. If there's something that everyone mentions that's good, then you, that's going to be something that you don't want to change. Okay. Any feedback that contradicts should be evaluated in terms of which argument is stronger and which feels more helpful. It will be up to you which feedback you follow ultimately. 
Okay. So if you have conflicting uh, messages about whether somebody likes or dislikes an element of your essay, uh, something that you've received feedback on either way on, okay, uh, it's going to be really up to you to try to decide who's got the stronger argument, whether it should be fixed, whether it'll be stronger if you fix it, or whether you can't do it any stronger than what you've already got. Okay. Uh, some of these are go without saying. Feedback calling for more detail should lead to the inclusion of more details. Okay, if you have somebody telling you, okay, I don't know enough about this to really get a, get a sense of this topic, then you probably want to include some more details about it. Okay, what kind of stuff can you include to make it a little bit more clear? What kind of details can you include to make it a little bit more understandable? <laughs> <clears throat> Feedback about organization or readability issues should be addressed as well based on what issues are being found, okay? So whatever your uh, peers are saying about the organization, if somebody's telling you that you need more paragraph breaks, you, should need, you probably should address that, okay? If you have somebody who says, I don't understand this term, what does it mean? Maybe you all put in a definition, okay? Uh, if you have somebody who's saying you maybe you should change your tone, maybe look at some of the wording that you're using and see what it, see what it sounds like to you. If it sounds like you've got the wrong tone for the type of evaluation that you're presenting, okay. Address those one at a time, but decide for yourself uh, what kind of issues you want to address and which of those pieces of feedback uh, you want to integrate. So once you're done with the revisions, then we go to the next workshop, which is proofreading and editing. Okay. So this stage of the process is the final polish a draft needs before being submitted. Now at this point, the draft you present for proofreading and editing should be at least 90% complete. Okay. Let me say that again. It should be 90% complete. It needs to be a full draft. Any revisions mentioned in the previous workshop should already be integrated if you're going to use that feedback. Okay, uh, so whatever revisions have to be made already. So when you're in this workshop, the proofreaders are looking for mechanical issues in the essay. So what they're looking for, one is spelling. Are your words spelled correctly in line with the standards of the language and the region in which you are writing? Okay. Are you going to go with standard spellings? Are you going to go with uh, regular, uh, let's just say regular language that's uh, acceptable for where you are, okay? There are going to be some spelling things that are going to change based on where your sources are coming from, especially if you're working with sources that are using continental versus American English, okay? Now keep in mind, American English is only really used in the United States, okay? If you go to Canada, they're using Continental English, which is the stuff that is uh, more British, okay? Uh, and there's some things that are different between the two styles of English, especially when it comes to spelling, okay? Uh, things like words that have an extra U in them, okay? Uh, ones that come to mind, the color, okay? Uh favor. Those are words that in American English do not have a U in them. Okay. But in uh, continental English, they do. Another one is C's used in place of S's. Okay. Uh, where American English uses S's, uh, for continental English sometimes will use a soft C. Okay. Uh, these, these would be words such as offense, defense, and license. Okay. Uh, you're basically saying license already has a soft C. Well, it actually, in continental English, it has two soft Cs. So it should be spelled L-I-C-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Okay? Uh, then there's also the wacky ones. Uh, there's ones where there's wholesale changes to the words. Okay? For instance, uh, in American English, we say aluminum. Okay? Continental English adds a syllable and makes it into aluminium. Okay? Or the craziest one is the word maneuver, okay? In American English, maneuver is spelled M-A-N-E-U-V-E-R, okay? In Continental English, maneuver is spelled M-A-N-O-E-V-R-E, -E, okay? 
Both the same word, has the exact same definition, it's just two entirely different spellings, uh, pretty much because America just doesn't like British spellings. Okay? That's all there is to it. Okay? So, make sure that your spelling is correct. And also, one other thing here. Do not rely on a spell checker. Okay? This is important. Okay, do not rely, just rely on a computer spell checker to run through the document and underline everything that's misspelled because those things are notoriously unreliable. Okay, they will do that for proper names. They will do that for uh, terminology that it's not familiar with. And sometimes it'll just do it arbitrarily and not stay consistent. Okay, a good example of this is the word it's. Okay, obviously there's two versions of it's. Okay, there's ITS, which is a possessive pronoun. Then there's IT apostrophe S, which is a contraction for it is. Okay, I have seen, literally, uh, the true story uh, from my lips to God's ear. I have seen the Microsoft Word spell checker tell me that the pronoun, the possessive pronoun is the wrong its when it's being used as a possessive pronoun. And then when I change it, it tells me that the contraction is wrong because it's supposed to be a possessive pronoun. But then I change it, I take the apostrophe out, and it tells me it's wrong again. Okay? Do not rely on your computer spell checker. It is very unreliable. Do not rely on it. Uh, next one, grammar. Are your sentence structures good? Have you eliminated run-on sentences, comma splices, or sentence fragments? Okay. Make sure that you have a, a essay that is devoid of any pieces or overlong sentences. Okay, do not use do not use run-on sentences. Do not use comma splice sentences. Do not use sentence fragments. I would add to this: do not abuse semicolons. Okay, William Faulkner needs to go to hell. Let's put it that way. William Faulkner is notorious for this. He abuses uh, semicolons in his novels uh, to the point where he writes paragraph-long sentences because instead of using normal punctuation, he makes the entire he punctuates the entire sentence with semicolons, and it's annoying. It's ultimately very annoying and very hard to understand his prose. Okay, people think he's a genius. I think he's a hack. Okay, but. And this is the main reason why is because I find his stuff unreadable, okay? And it's because he use, overuses these semicolons and doesn't believe in the power of the period, okay? So, do not use excessive front-on sentences. Do not use, do not use excessive semicolons. Do not use comma splices. No run-on sentences. Also, avoid using sentence fragments. Make sure that every sentence has a full subject and predicate structure, okay? <laughs> then we have mechanics. This is mainly punctuation. Uh, is your punctuation correct for the context? Okay. Uh, are you using the right punctuations? Is it? Are you being hyperbolic by using exclamation points? Let me put it this way: If you're doing an academic uh, paper, you should not use exclamation points. Okay, unless it's quoting somebody who's using them. Have you utilized the right words and punctuations for the right situations? Okay. Look at what the word choice is, okay? Is it the right word for the right circumstance, okay? This is not poetry where you can get away with things uh, that maybe you want to try to change the meaning of a word, okay? This is an academic paper. The word's going to mean what it means. So do make sure that you have the right word there. Make sure you have the right punctuation for the circumstances that you're using. All right, one last thing to talk about here, and that is online workshopping. Because again, uh, an issue that people were having with the work, the workshop weeks for the uh, classical argument was that there was a decided lack of participation with some teams. Okay, because we are doing everything online here, that also includes our workshop sessions. Okay, now because of this, there's a few things that are imperative for workshops to work in this class. Okay, this has to happen. First off, everyone must participate, okay? 
They're still getting around. A team members not submitting drafts, or just submitting drafts and not giving feedback, may as well not be on the team at all. Okay? Make sure that you are holding up your end of the bargain. Make sure that you are putting out your drafts. Make sure you're giving the feedback that you need to give. Okay? Everyone must check for drafts regularly. During the workshop week, I'd recommend checking for drafts at least twice daily. So, maybe in the morning, get onto uh, eCampus, uh, check, that, check your team discussion board, or check whatever messaging system you're using, see if anybody's posted a draft yet, okay? If they have, go ahead and shoot some feedback off. Come back to it in the afternoon, see if anybody else has posted anything, okay? Uh, or maybe mid-afternoon and then evening. Well, how, well, whatever schedule you want to use, you want to try to check this at least twice a day, okay? Especially during a workshop week. Uh, again, find a system that works for your team. So everybody's team is going to be different in terms of what technology they're comfortable with using. Some teams have started using Google Drive as a clearinghouse for workshop drafts, while others are still using the discussion board. Any system works so long as everyone can agree to use it and check it. That's the hard part here. There's a so applied social contract here, is that everyone has to agree that they will check for those drafts. Everyone has to agree that they will leave feedback for those drafts. Okay, so. As a result, make sure you have contact with your entire team. If anybody has ghosted you, find another team. Okay, Find somebody who can give you feedback. I've actually been suggesting to some of the people who have been writing, uh, especially when they've been giving me, letting me know about this on like the Wednesday before it's due. Uh, some people have been asking about this, and I've telling them, find somebody in your household to read it. Find a friend to read it. Okay, Anybody. So just somebody who can give you some feedback, okay? Somebody who can tell you what they think about it, whether they think it sounds funny, looks funny, reads funny, whatever, okay? Do something, okay? The thing is that you have to remember here, if you're going to work with the teams, it's your responsibility to participate in the workshop with your teammates. They are counting on you, and you are counting on them. It all balances out here, okay? Everybody needs to be working together. We are not competitive here. This is all intended to work together toward a common goal, and that is getting you guys through this class, getting you guys passing, getting you guys to write better. That is the main goal. Okay? Everybody needs to be on the same page for this. All right? So yeah, this is a short this is a short one this week, uh, mainly because, as I said, next week's spring break, I didn't want to load you guys too much. Okay? Uh, when we come back. Uh, we're going to start looking at stuff that's going to apply to the annotated bibliography, uh, and just and be ready after spring break to start looking at uh, elements of your final exam. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that stuff out to you. Okay, so uh, for this week again, this is the revision workshop week for uh, the evaluation arguments. Okay, so what I want you guys to make sure you're doing is posting your drafts. Uh, Post your revision drafts wherever you're posting them and getting giving feedback to your teammates. Okay? That's the big thing. Of course, obviously, you still want to be working on MindTap. You still want to work on the discussion boards. Uh, I'm giving you a break here this week. There's no lecture assignments. Okay? There's no lecture exercises for this week. So all I want to do is give you this pep talk about workshopping. Okay? As usual, there will be a collaborate session this week. There will not be one next week. Okay, I'm not taking my computer with me to Orlando. We're not. I'm not going to do a session. Okay, but following week there will be. Okay, but this week there will be a collaborate session. If you need any help at that point, that's going to be the time to get it. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys uh, after spring break.